Greetings, my dear friends. Welcome back to Alan Wake 2. You thought I was finished, didn't you? So did I. So did I. But behold, we have the final draft. We're going to stick with normal as well because I want to get through it. <laughs> I know I'm not the gamer I once was. That being said, I will play Witcher 3 on Death March. But that's Back different. The beginning, with the memory of the past loop already fading fast. But while it lingers, I know there's hope. We're not doomed to repeat our failures in an eternal loop. This is a spiral. Ha ha ha! This is already different. A fictional poet once said, Beyond the shadow you settle for, there is a miracle illuminated. I will not settle for a shadow. I'll find the miracle. Through the night. It's not just victims and monsters. I see now there are heroes as well. We can find our way through the darkness. We will break through the surface. We will emerge into the light. And we still start with a naked nightingale. Excellent. That's uh, alright, Nightingale. We're just gonna go and get you sacrificed quickly. As quickly as we can. Hey, Tammy! Help! Ed and Tammy can't help. Not the sort of situation I'd want to be trudging through naked. As a matter of fact, trudging and naked are just two things combined I don't ever want to have to put up with. The occasional terrifying flash in my brain, well, I mean have to put up with reality, don't we? But the naked trudging, not for me. Naked sprinting, even more not for me. Oh dear. Oh no. What's going on? It's alright, Nightingale. You're cold, wet, naked, trudging through the woods at night, but you're about to be dead. It's fine.
Once you're dead, you won't have to worry about it anymore. Let's just go straight to the light. Hi, Yako and Elmo and everyone else. I mean, I don't know who these people are. Hey kiddo, how are you? I'm good mom, how are you? This trip might take a little longer than I thought. I'm sorry I've been gone so much lately, Logan. Oh my god mom, it's not your fault people get all murdery. What happened? Just work stuff. Right. Well, dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers. I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. I love you both. This is what happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you too. And say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding so much. Logan! I will. Bye, kiddo. Alex Casey, stop brooding? No. Logan thinks you should try cheering up. <laughs> Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. It can't be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. <clears throat> I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. <laughs> A deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. Alrighty. Here we are, back in the world of... Memorizing. Bright Falls. Righty, 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 righty. Boony-legged path.
Okay, we've got a bunch of music. Not quite all of it. I missed one of the various artists. I think I hear someone. Could be our deputy. I can go take a look. What the? Hey, over here. Hey there. Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Raker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson? Saga Anderson. I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. <laughs> Sorry about that, ma'am. I... I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... Federal agents right here, Thornton. My partner, Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. Right here? What do you mean? I think it was you. Oh, shit. They didn't hear me, did they? Uh... Okay, I could use a briefing. Tell us about the crime scene. I was getting to that, Thornton. Well, we reckon there are some uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, but you know, inside. And are there any witnesses? Were there any witnesses? Yeah couple out-of-towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. The city Not that we have anything against city folk, right, Thornton? But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took them back to town a while ago. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure, that's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store. You can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. Tell them I'm here, Winky. I'll show them around. They got it, Thornton. <sighs> Most incompetent. Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case so far. Make Law sure I'm officers. You boys done? <sighs> it's a beautiful view though. That the witch's ladle, I think it was called, that tree. Come along, Casey. I need to think through the facts of the case. Oh, that's right. Case board. The mine place. My version of the mine palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the mine place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Alrighty. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. The case board is a mental technique that allows Saga to analyze clues and progress the investigation. Okay, so... No victims reported missing in 2010, no other commonalities. Okay. 
Ted Lane, dentist, stab wounds, bloating and bruising on the wrists. Discovered in 2012, sorry, buried in a shallow grave. Wendy Davis, teacher, body bloated, large chest wound. Found in Cauldron Lake, 2018. Organs missing, predation. State of the body does not match eight years spent in a lake. Now Percy Wolf, store owner, bruising, heart removed, strange tattoos. Found two weeks ago, chest wound was ruled as cause of death. Tattooing on the body is illegible. Murder method. Slight difference in murders. Bloating only commonality in bodies, but not cause of death, which is chest trauma. Exposure to water post-mortem. Bruising on wrists and legs. Two of the victims had bruising, some form of restraint. Strapped or belted down. Deep gash in the chest, heart missing. Most recent victim died of major chest trauma. Consistent with 2018 victim, hard to confirm due to condition of body. All bodies experienced bloating, which is indicative of drowning, but only one victim was found in water. Killer profile. I need to talk to someone, apparently. Post-mortem tattooing of the body. Victim number three was covered in illegible tattoos. A message from the killer, maybe, or their art. Murder targets have no discernible common traits. They just all disappeared in 2010. Much like a certain writer. Chest trauma resembles animal butchery techniques. The killer may be a sportsman or hunter. Or group of sportsmen and or hunters. I see you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it. We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene. Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm hmm Real funny, Anderson. I love that they take each and every step on the way down perfectly. That's really nice. It's just a nice touch. Stairs are out. You okay to jump down? I'm not that. Mighty mountain in the distance is no other than Mirror Peak, the iconic landmark overlooking Cauldron Lake. From the right angle, its beauty will be reflected on the calm surface of the lake, mirrored in all its inverted glory. Mountain with glorious purpose. <laughs> gives me a headache. It's too much sky. There is a lot of sky. Not a bad place to get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> if getting back to nature is your thing. Not a bad place to get murdered. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? <laughs> if they did, next coffee's on me. Deputy Thornton, I take it. 
That's me, at your service, ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. Ready to get this case solved. So, FBI, huh? Can't fault his enthusiasm. So cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. Not like he doesn't know more than he's. Well, Those all about real. this particular one. Let's just see this body, shall we? Now, this is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. Now, he didn't touch nothing, you know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, Deputy. No tarp. You owe me a call. Okay. Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the MO of the previous murders? Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. You unlocked your first key image. You can place it on the case board in the side of mine place. Let's do that then. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Yes. Coincidence? No. Uh, another body has been found in the woods near Bright Falls. Perfect timing. Need to see if this is linked to the killings we're here to investigate. Objectives uh, mm -hmm. viewable in the case board and your goals. Okay. Okay. Well, we don't know if it's consistent with the previous murders yet, but it absolutely is. Because, oh, look. The carrier left the heart right next to the body. Uh. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. Inside stab wound. Chest cut open. Heart removed. Alrighty, now. Is it consistent? We have major chest trauma. This is consistent with previous killings. Cargo straps used to restrain victim. Bruising indicates victim was alive when restrained, matches other cases. Heart found near victim's body. Well. Heart removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. Yes, it does. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. The clues have resolved the open question and unlocked a deduction. <coughs> As you advance the investigation. New questions will be unlocked, updating your goals. You can check the updated goals by pressing Y. I can indeed. Learn more about the victim and more about the killer. Free to examine the case board or leave to collect new clues. Heart was removed, then left on the table near the body. Was this murder interrupted? Uh, who knows? Now we need to talk to someone. Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about... 13 years ago, and I haven't heard a word about him since. Well, until now. Nightingale? Robert Nightingale? Oh, yes. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. Ah, yes. Nightingale.
He was such a lovely human being in the first game. But then we don't know. Large amount of blood on the table. Oh, large amount of blood on the table. Right That's um probably a significant thing to be aware Multiple of. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers. There's a deduction available. Someone left in a hurry. Knock the tripod over. Was it for a camera? Most tripods are. Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here. Waiting. Not just drinking beer, but smoking, munching on stuff. So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He paranoia got led to suffering, no. Chased ghosts until he fell off the map. I guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago, 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. <coughs> this town wants to forget. I think that's everything. For now, at least. Mm -hmm. Anything clicking yet? Not sure. Need to think about it. Alrighty. Yes, according to Casey, Nightingale went off the deep end and the FBI fired him. I trust Casey's read on people. Sounds like our victim wasn't mentally stable. Thornton, victim is Robert Nightingale, last seen right here in Bright Falls, 13 years ago. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. Mental state questionable at time of disappearance. No one's heard from this guy in 13 years. Why surface now? Where's he been? And multiple sets of footprints. There's definitely lots of activity here. It's unlikely our killer was working alone. And a heavy blood splatter on the table. Bootprints indicating multiple killers. Quite the party. Multiple assailants present, messy scene, crime of passion, premeditated. They really made a mess here, caught up in the act or just sloppy work. Well, they were waiting. Staking out this spot, having a cold one while they waited for our victim. And the tripod as well. They planned for the murder to happen here, passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. But why Nightingale? He's been missing for 13 years. Why here? Why now? Profiling. Get into the subject's head. See what they saw. <coughs> Feel what they felt. Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition to a revelation. Piece it together. Profiling. Using her intuition, Saga can discover new clues by profiling people of interest. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did 
we end up here? Out from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Robert Nightingale came from the lake before his murder. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Flip the switch. It goes click. Lights are off. It's somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. A Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. But what? I wonder. This mug always cheers me up. Um, goals. Profile of the victim. We just did that. Yes, okay. You can feel that Nightingale came from the lake, but why now, after 13 years, where has he been? The lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey, let's take a look down by the lake. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this way, right? Right. Okay, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just wait here. You do that. this one of your hunches, Anderson? Did something happen at the lake? I think Nightingale came up from that direction. From the lake. Probably looking for shelter. Safety. They were waiting for him. When you're ready, I'd love to hear what you put together so far. Sure. It's not that complicated. Nightingale was out in the woods alone at night. Possibly nude. The killers knew he was here. Ambushed him. Dragged him to the campgrounds. Strapped him to the table, cut his heart out. But then they were interrupted by those witnesses, the bookers. The job is unfinished. And that seems pretty complicated to me. What was this guy doing skinny dipping at this time of year? Haven't figured that part out yet. Mm hmm. Lots of questions. Lots of answers for us to find. Can quick access the map without I'm entering the mine out. place. Be right back. Got it. Just to get the damn thing to go away. Okay. Friday. Midge told me today that her family's moving away. This sucks. I haven't even told her that I like her yet. What's the point anymore? She said her parents want to get better jobs and get her to a better school in a big city. I guess that's fair. Who wants to stay in bright fucking falls? So I told her. She said, thanks. Fucking kill me. Yeah, that... that does suck. Monday. I snuck out last night again, went to the big house by the lake instead of just watching it from here like I always do. Instead of just sitting around like I always do. Screw that! Anyway, something weird is going on down there. I'm going to find out what. I'm going to go back there tomorrow with better gear. But I can find a way inside the building, take some photos, it's gonna be epic! Or maybe not. Maybe it's an epically bad idea. Is that a kid's lunchbox? An Alex Casey movie lunchbox. 
Casey hates the English jokes <coughs> about coincidentally having the same name as a fake detective. He hates those cheesy crime books, but he really hates the movies. Yeah, coincidence. I know things can get a little crazy around here, but if you're ever feeling scared, just remember that Alan is watching over us. Manuscript fragments can be used to upgrade weapons in the mine place. But I don't think I can do much with one. Okay, righty. Witch's heart here lived the witch of Golden Lake. Beware her spirit may still haunt this place. This isn't where Barbara Jagger lives. She's in that bird leg cabin on the lake that disappears. Whoever put this this place up never played the first game. Although this might be older than Barbara Yaga. Barbara Yaga. Barbara Jaga. Anyway, that's enough of that. Nothing I can do in there, it would seem. Anything around this way? No. Okay. Ooh. Not back yet. I'll be back in a second. Roger. I'm having a wee look down this way. Can't go any further. Well, yes. It's, it's a bit damp. Oh, that's some gorgeous lighting. Come on. Where are we going? Lead the way. Now that Saga is no longer stuck on a rock. Love that they're leaving footprints as well in the mud. That's awesome. I didn't know trees got that big. Gives me the creeps. Yeah, some you trees do get that more. big. <clears throat> it is kind of creepy, though. A witch with no heart. A strange echo of owl murder. Hmm. There is no mystery in Cauldron Lake being named after its cauldron shape. And yet there are many mysterious stories about the lake. It being a gloomy doorway to the underworld, or of a witch whose cauldron the lake really was. The local legend tells that when the affections of a local sheriff went on sorry, the legend tells that when the affections of a local sheriff went unanswered, he accused the lady in question of having bewitched him. 
She was drowned, but her la dropped ladle grew into a strange tree named Witch's Ladle. The woman returned to avenge her wrongdoers. If she was not a witch before, she was one now. She killed the sheriff, drowning him in the lake. Then she took out his heart and locked it in a box. With the heart, she would summon him from the lake to exact revenge on her behalf. Or so the legend goes. Well, barefoot prints. Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? They come out from under the boulder. It makes no sense. There's a piece of paper on the ground. Not just any piece of paper. A page full of text on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm-hmm. Like a manuscript. A page of a story. Mm. Killer left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading the words. words. These words felt like a message. Felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An invitation. How could they not accept? Even if they knew it would end up hurting them. Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. <coughs> Neither. That's another I thing entirely. About this page. Oh, come on. Mine place. Hello? Weird. Okay. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. Gone missing here 13 years ago. Now he had suddenly turned up. Only to be murdered in a brutal ritual on the very day of their arrival. And then there was the page. This page. The first page that they had found. Not the last. The first step down into terrifying depths. Secret truths trembling beyond the threshold. Reading the words, these words, felt like a message. Was a message. Someone knew they were here. What they were doing. Someone playing a game with them. Leading them on. An invitation. How could they not accept? The sheer audacity of this impossible mystery presented to them. Even if they knew it would end up hurting them. <laughs> yes. Okay. Tell me about the page, Nightingale. A page in the woods. A story about these events. What is Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest. <coughs> Inside. The awful truth. You must dig it out. Something was put inside him, in his chest. I must find out what. Yes, we must indeed find out everything. Okay, spawn. Footprints emerging from under the rock. And the trail has gone cold. There we go. I think he came from the lake. But his tracks make no sense. 
What? He walked through a boulder? Doesn't make sense. Dead end. Um, anything else here? Sorry. Martin Guy has something hidden inside of him. There's more here going on than I'm seeing. I need to examine this body properly back in town. Found all I can here. Okay. Time to properly examine the body. See what I can find inside. Alrighty. Casey, I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. <laughs> the text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative. To do what? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about control. Deciding what happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. Too late. No. I'm already hooked. And Control was a completely different game by these same people. Um, going back up to the Witch's Hut, because that manuscript page that I just found there was not there, so I'm wondering if other stuff has changed. And then we will read that page as well, momentarily. Other games with a slightly less reality warping premise? I might not bother with this. <laughs> but this is Alan Wake 2. And it's also the uh, final draft, so there may very well be, well, there absolutely will be new and different stuff. That's kind of why I'm playing it, is to see the new and different stuff. That's entirely the point. So, we're going to go down this path you as well. This entire area is inside a caldera. This whole mountain used to be an active volcano. Imagine the force it took to carve this crater out of the earth. Caldera is a pretty rare, so be sure to take it in. So, essentially, we're standing in the gaping maw of hell. You got it. <laughs> I used to love geology when I was in school. I helped Logan build a great baking soda volcano for her science fair. Cheating on a science fair? That's almost a crime, Anderson. I'm not gonna say no to quality time with a volcano. <laughs> I mean, my daughter. <laughs> Welcome back, Anderson. I want to walk around for a minute. You know where to find me. Okay, this might be a slightly longer detour than I was thinking. Okay, no, no it won't. Good to see you still in one piece, Anderson. Forest could be a dangerous place. I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back.
got it. Anyway, now... Saga bent down to inspect the body on the table. Somehow it felt familiar. <coughs> the straps, the heart, the mutilated corpse laying on the rain-soaked wood. Like deja vu. She chased the source of the feeling. Found nothing. None of the victims from her past cases resembled this one. It didn't feel like anything from her past. More like something from a dream. From a life she could barely remember. Maybe one that wasn't even hers. Then the feeling passed. Like a shadow in the trees shifting with the wind. Saga blinked. Shook the feeling from her head. She turned her focus back on the work. There was a lot to do. Casing the deputy were watching her. She had a feeling this would be an exciting case. Alrighty. That's the uh, first new manuscript page, I'd say. I love the mud. It's so muddy looking. Some people are all about the water graphics. For me, it's the mud. You, you get good mud yeah. in a game, leaves oh, footprints behind. Big puddles. Crazy flooding down there, huh? That's impressive. Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure, but the coroner won't be back in town for another week after deer. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the Oh Dear Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. Thanks. Let's get the car, drive to Bright Falls, and talk to these witnesses. The bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. Seems like a nice town so far. Murders aside. <laughs> Pretty woods. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean, Anderson. Deputies aren't exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff this gruesome. Ha, ah, yeah. Yeah. Except they often see stuff this gruesome. between the cult and Rose. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. Roger. A lot of people that would probably end up accidentally murdered in this town. I think. Speaking of Rose... Who's leaving these out here? We're all in this together, hero. Have a heroic day. Thank you, Rose. She does good work.
this probably goes without saying, but if you haven't either played or seen a playthrough of this already, this is going to be full of spoilers yet. because heart removed, tripod, is tracks leading to a dead end. Roughly a new game tripod. plus, For a camera? sort of. To record a, a snuff film, maybe. And why take out his heart just to throw it away? To stuff in something for us to find. Woo, here we are, back at the cars. Here we are. More importantly, Let's our back car. To town and meet the sheriff at the diner. I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these punches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. <clears throat> Need to swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town. The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. Okay. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Pleasure. He's just hey, jaywalking. Very well, thank you. Walk on the damn footpath, Casey. You're in the you're in the way in the middle of the road like that. Actually. Just how much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. Got it. Don't know. Don't care. <sighs> Not enough. That's how much. Charlie is totally my spirit thermos. Isn't it? Charlene, are you so comfortable as I am? You don't think the amount of hot caffeinated beverages you've downed has anything to do with it? I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh, I'm in hell. Swamp ass city. Ugh. Change of topic, please. Well, huh? Map of Bright Falls. That's necessary. F flooded. Yes, yes, it is.
Okay. Let's get back to Casey. I suppose in the middle of DFS preparations, it really doesn't matter if you're wandering in the road. After all, Charlie's going to get himself run over if there's any traffic. <clears throat> I'll get there. I need bolt cutters. Will be the bell of the ball at this year's Deer Fest. Just a few more days. It's a nice looking float for sure. This is my first Deer Fest, so I don't know what to expect, really. It is the finest entertainment a town like ours has to offer. The happiest day of the year. Like Christmas, but better. <laughs> well, I certainly hope so. I hate the holidays. Like Christmas, but better. It's known as the staying in and eating your body weight in pancakes day around here. You need to recover after all that celebrating. Well, I've got plans now by the sound of it. I'll head straight to the old deer one. <coughs> oh, you won't be the only one. Uh, day after deer fest, everyone's in the Odia Diner. Deering it up. What have you lost? You look... You look like you've lost something. Can I help you? It's literally my job to find things and people that are missing. Can I help? No? Okay then. Welcome back, Anderson. Let me guess. The FBI. Welcome to Bright Falls. It's nice to have you here. Uh, I got you both some coffee. Oh, it's Washington's finest. Giant, vibrant lettering on our jackets didn't give it away that we're FBI at all? Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Breaker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Sure. But it's slowed down ever since Cauldron Lake was fenced off. Let me guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hmm. You can go ahead, Anderson. We'll be here. That's always a strange thing, I feel. Some if someone crazy. wants to eject something from their mouth, the way to avert that is to cram more stuff into it. It doesn't work for me. Water, maybe. But pie? I don't know. Jukebox is out of order. The poor old thing can only take so much of the same song being played over and over and over. I'm as big a fan of Coconut as the next person, but come on! Don't touch the bear! Yeah. 
yeah, and you're surrounded by them. Hey there, Mr. Deer. You remind me of a dream I had. Must pat every deer in game. Still don't know why. But it's a thing that Saga must do. If there is a deer I need something to and it is open. mounted to the wall, she will absolutely pat it. This is a very dark and dingy crapper. No wonder Stucky got Stucky. Okay. Ed, Tammy? Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy and he's Ed. Oh, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd uh, love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? Why were you at Cauldron Lake? What were you doing at Cauldron Lake last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. If you have to point out to the authorities that what you're doing is perfectly legal, it probably is a bit shady. But can you tell me what you saw? So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and he was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives. Like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. They were shouting, Cold of the tree, the cold of the tree, cold of the tree. Oh, and then we found out. The whole thing was terrifying. That's all. Just excuse me while I duck into my mind place and profile your girlfriend, Ed. Well, I'll profile the both of you. The cult of the tree. <coughs> the booker's telling me. I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree bag, Tammy. Finder's keeper is Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? This was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Has the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with a murder. They were telling the truth. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. <clears throat> you need to hand it over. Okay. Okay. Told you not to keep that thing to me. <coughs> Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. Mm -hmm. Like we'd even dream of missing dear. Oh God. Saga! Saga Anderson. Hi, Rose. I thought we
we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter. That's so weird. You don't remember. <laughs> how do you know I have a daughter? It is the sort of thing that you'd expect a parent to remember. I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <coughs> if you say so. Hi. A cult murdering a man is pretty extreme. Why didn't you tell the police what you saw? We did. We told those two idiot deputies they didn't listen. And they wanted to throw Ed and I in jail for that murder. You know, Bright Falls is just Alabama with bigger trees. This is my case now, and no one is throwing you in jail. If you need anything else, just come to me. Got it. Thank you, Saga. You're welcome, Tammy. Say... Not all authority figures are terrible people. So, what happened to you and Kristen? We're all good, Ed. You can ease up now. God. Hey, you think they serve alcohol and toast here? Yeah, no, I wouldn't count on it. No. You could probably get a damn tasty venison burger, though. So, Rose, help me out. How do you think we know each other? We all know each other around here. It's been a while, but I never forget a face. Or a coffee order. Guess I just have one of those faces. Seen anything out of the ordinary in town lately? Suspicious people in deer masks? No one's suspicious. But soon enough, there'll be lots of happy people wearing deer masks for deer fest. Practically everyone will be wearing one. Good to know. <sighs> if only you could just say to her right now, I'm the hero of light. All set. My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. Murder cult. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not going to find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? <laughs> I played some D&D back in the day. Wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff! Looks like you have some guests! Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true! More the merrier! Have a good one, Sheriff. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. Always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But it's best not to take it personally. Hey, boss. The corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep. In the morgue. All prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. And knowing those two chumps, they probably just fucking oh, the dump them Sheriff in the Station. back seat of their car. Need, just, uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. I'll be right with you, sir. Yep, yep. Just here to pay my ticket. 
whenever you're ready to take How my you? money. Agent? Just having a look. Oh. As you know, the investigation is being taken over by the federal agents. Sheriff Breaker wants us to cooperate fully. Aye, aye, ma'am. I'm being serious, Nelson. Especially with one of them in the room, Nelson. You absolute chump. Oh dear, I am a tourist, and it appears that I'm lost in the woods. If only had a tour guide, also. It's bear season. Also, it's bear season. Oh no, a bear. <laughs> That's why at Coscula Brothers we say, fuck the government, we have bolt cutters. Yep. That's what they say. So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns and he's away this week, but you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Something about morgues. They always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. He's joking. <coughs> and they say he doesn't have a sense of humor. Actually, I don't think they do say okay. that, but still. Let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clues can the body give me? There's writing on here. Writing Can't on the out. heart. Writing? How'd they manage that? The body shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. It doesn't add up. This looks like text. A tattoo? Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. Defensive wounds. They put up a fight. Aha. Uh -huh. They did leave something inside his chest. I think we need to do this. Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. Body has been prepped, ready for examination. Hope it can provide some actual answers. Uh, as I suspected, it looks like something was put in there. Looks like he put up a fight before they uh, got him. This 
smudged text. Is this some kind of tattoo? It's too smudged to read. Chest wound is cause of death. But the corpse is bloated. Waterlogged. Doesn't add up. There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? Tattoos on body and heart? How did killers have time? Doesn't make sense. Try to stay in the light to avoid being detected by enemies. will restore some of your health if you leave or attack from a safe haven while in combat it will become temporarily unavailable now.